Hello. Oh, uh, what have you done this time? On. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cycles and Spiders. Last Sup, everybody. Uh, ben here, and today we've got Esme helping us out as well. Um, like I said in the last video, all we're doing today is going to mix it up a bit. Um, obviously, I use uh, red runners and dubia roaches for feeders, and um, we're going to rehouse them out of these little thornariums um, because I keep finding the odd escapee and it's annoying me. Into move back a bit for me, darling. These massive rubs. Um, which um, are ginormous. They are ginormous. <laughs> which, and I'm also going to change it up a bit. Instead of having a completely plastic tub with just the egg crate in there, I'm going to make it a more natural setup. So we're going to have a uh, substrate, some bark, and some hiding places. Uh, keep the humidity a bit higher. Um, obviously, then I haven't got to worry about the cobweb rotting as well. And we're going to see sort of how the cockroaches get on with that. Um, I know that dubias will be absolutely fine. I'm not sure about the road runners, so it will be an interesting thing to find out. Um, so yeah, let me move you around a bit and we'll get into it. Okay, so first things first, what we're going to do, Esme is going to pull both the boxes out in a second and just empty them. And then we've got to drill some air holes. So hang on a sec, let me flip you around. Okay, so Esme, if you want to pull the boxes out, just pop them open and get the pieces of paper out. And just scrunch it up and throw it somewhere. Thank you. And the other one. Perfect. Uh, so now what we're going to do, I've got a drill over here with a 4 mil drill bit in there. Uh, we're just going to drill some hole, air holes in, in just the top of both the containers, not in the sides. Um, so a bit of humidity can escape, but hopefully the roaches won't. So let me just put you on a tripod and we'll give it a go. So, four mil drill bit, nice and simple. Obviously, you guys know how to drill holes. So I'm not going to do any particular order or pattern. I'm just going to do some until I think there's enough. Okay, there we go. So that's the first one. Um, just going to pause the camera. Next one's going to drill the other one and then we'll come back to you. Right, so we have drilled, oh, it's a bit tight now too, people. So we've drilled our holes in the lids of our enclosures. I uh, did this one. As well did that one, Ooh. I did this one. Um, so what we're gonna do now is chuck some substrate in there. So the substrate I'm using is just gonna be uh, coconut fiber and um, topsoil. And then I'm gonna put some uh, sphagnum moss on top as well. So I'll just grab that. Okay, so got my bucket of substrate. I haven't got loads, so I'm just going to put sort of an even mix, uh, even spread between the pair of them, and I'll get some more and top it up at a later date. So just going to pour that in there. And put one in there. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to get stuck to the bottom, and something to mix it up a bit with. going to spread that out so it covers the entire bottom of the enclosure so there's not loads in there at the moment I need to get another brick but that'll be absolutely fine for now and then just some of this sphagnum moss what we're just going to do is pull a large chunk out chuck it in and the same on the other one so I put the large chunk in there and then we're just going to pull it apart spread it out a bit Whilst you're pulling it apart, the moss comes out with little bits of So that'll just keep <laughs> holding the humidity a bit better as well. Alright, I'm going to buck it out of the way. Okay, um, then 
And you can't see my face properly today, I apologise. Uh, what we're going to do is, I've got some like, old bits of cork bark and stuff. So, I'm just going to chuck a couple of bits of cork bark so I've got somewhere to hide. And then I need that other tub because that's got loads of stuff in it. Watch out, lovely. Put it back in, please. And then, yeah, so we've got a whole box of bits and bobs here. So I'm just going to pick a couple of bits of cork bark and so does my and just chuck them in the boxes. Cork bark, not the hard stuff, I mean. Just stuff on that one. Got little bits as well. If you want to, we can use one of those bits. Or coconut hide. Coconut? Yeah. I use the uh, Izzy's thing. <laughs> Izzy's basically my pet. <laughs> uh, Izzy is Esme's leopard Which at one, one point we will show her in a video. Right, so that is that pretty much. Let me bring you over so you can see them. This is one enclosure. That's the other one. Like I said, I will add some more substrate just to bring the level up a bit. But that'll be absolutely fine for now. So what I'm going to do now is put the Dubai's in first because there's a lot less of them. And I can use the empty tub to sort of separate out the Red Runners because there's loads of Red Runners. Um, so oh, Red Runners. Those, these cockroaches. So oh. I'm going to chuck a lid on one. Get rid of one tub, and we'll do the Dubai's first. So, I'll check you back on the tripod and back in a sec. Okay, so the Dubai's are really, really simple. They're really big. They're quite slow. Don't put that on there. Thank you. So all we're going to do is just pull out one of the bits of uh, egg crate, check it all over, make sure there's no cockroach hiding in it. If there are, they go in the tub. If there aren't, it's going to the side. And so far... There's none. Next one, see. Oh, there we go, there's a roach. So, that can go straight in there. That's shiny. That'll be happy, happy, happy. It's Hopefully, they'll actually breed a bit better in there as well. I've also got a couple of um, these, I can't remember what they're called, I think they're called dermicide beetles. Um, like that caterpillar thing, I don't know if you can see it or not. Well, it's in there. They're all going in as well, because they act. What is that? It's like a caterpillar. This one, because um, they act as a cleanup crew as well, so that's always handy. There yeah. we go. There's our roaches. So we're just gonna. They can't, they can't get you. Just bang it on the side, and then there's none left on there. We'll just do that with every single one. Checking to make sure we haven't got any left clinging on. Oh, I see the little caterpillar. Beetle thingy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, roach wise, I think I've got about 50 Dubai roaches. They're not masses, and they're quite slow to get breeding. Um, but they are really good for the larger spiders, obviously, because the uh, red runners don't get as large as adults. They can't get you stuck. Stop, stop, <laughs> <she's freaking laughs> so yeah, like I said, the uh, the Dubai roaches get bigger, so they're better for the bigger tarantulas. There you go. That's what's left in there. So we're just going to pop those guys in the tub as well. Get off my hand, mate. And the blue ones have wings, but they can't fly. That's right. Uh, we'll just let those but the females crawl out in. for a second. But I don't think we have any boy ones in here. Only just put a dead one in. That's here. right. Uh. So there we go. That is now clean as a whistle, and uh, we've got our roaches in there. Set up the door. Okay. So let me just bring you over so you can have a better look. And they should deserve respect. Oh dear, so there you go, you can see them all in there. Hopefully, one's climbing, they'll be a lot happier mm. in there. They can't climb up the sides properly, that one's just climbing on the uh, cork block. But as you can see, straight away, they're in there, they're all burying, burrowing down. Um, so, yeah, that's good. Tomorrow, I have got a delivery coming, they didn't turn up today. I've got a delivery of some um, isopods and some springtails, so I'm going to add 25 to 30 isopods and loads of springtails into each one as well so that will help keep it clean too 
Um, the boys' wings have fallen. Yeah, that's right. But yeah. hopefully they'll be uh, a lot happier and they'll breed quicker and more proficiently yeah. in here yeah. as well. So, yeah, that's how I'm keeping my Dubai roaches at the moment, or Dubia roaches. So let's uh, pause you there, pop them away, and we will do the red runners, which is going to be yeah. a bit more exciting. Okay, so next one we're going to do is the red runner. So Esme's going to pull that tub out for us, get the lid off. Okay. This was Ben's burrow. Well, not burrow, but Enclosure. habitat he made. Put that over there. Right. Is wood, wood, wood. The red runner is a bit more, be a bit more exciting. Can you move backwards a little bit? I've just got a bit more room because there's loads of them and they do love to run and they jump as well so and they are red <laughs> they are red as well that's why they're called red runners yeah. um, so let's tilt you down a bit so you can see the tub and this way i'm going to do it a bit differently because the um hasn't got the individual bits of egg crate it's got two just massive bits um, so i'm just going to sort of wing it really and we'll see how it goes So there's loads of bug food in here as well because there's lo so many of them. Um, so I'm going to pour that in. Uh, uh, all the bug food. And then, there you go. You can see all the cockroaches. So I'm just going to try and bang those off. I'm going to put that away for a second so they. Oh my gosh, there are loads. Try not to get out. And I've got to try and get them out of the tub without them climbing up me because they love to escape. There are loads. There are loads. But the red runners are doing really well as well. They're breeding loads, lots of boothickers, I think they're called, being laid, like the basically the roach egg sac sort of things. Um, they look like worms. They just have to be a bit longer. Yeah. So yeah, they're doing really, really well. Um, but like I said, I keep finding escapees. I think the little ones are escaping through the um, these holes in the lid because because there's not that much height in the tub. They can get to the roof pretty easily um, so I think we can't That's see any more cockroaches on that side yeah that looks like that out of that first lot um, I don't know if you can see but this little black thing and there on my finger that is an uthuka or a egg sac What's that thing there? Uh, so what I'm going to try and do oh, there's one in there. yeah there's a few of them so I'm just going to try and pop that off eggs Oh. Uh, that's an old one. Um, there's one there. I didn't know they make eggs. So I'll pop that in because then hopefully, there's another one there. Hopefully they will hatch. I don't really want them to go in a bin because they'll still probably hatch and then we'll have them more everywhere. More eggs, more, bit, more so food. Let's just pop that over there. Which is good for our pets. Right, next, right, the second piece of egg crate. I've also got a large tub of bug gel there. Um, which I'm going to carry on putting in there because they drink and eat so quick, so much, just because of the quantity of them. Um, they, were, I thought they were drowning in the water, so I've gone for bug gel. So right, second piece of egg crate. This one's a bit dirty, so I'm just going to try and flip it over and get some of the dirt off first. And as you can see, a there's a lot more adults in here. There's also a couple of Dubai roaches in here. Um, I was going to fish them all out, but to be honest, they're quite happy living together. The odd one or two. And when I'm picking out the roaches, I will just take the Dubai's out as well, so I know that they're in there. So it's not really a problem at all. So again, we'll just tap them all off. Flip that over, they're still holding on really well. I'm guessing they have sticky feet. Sort of. So we are getting there. Lots of egg casings on this one. Whether they're new egg casings or old, I'm not sure. And I think they're just sort that's of it for roaches just, on that. They're just sort of making a city. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So there's some more Uthikas as well, or I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce it. Uthika? Uthikas? I don't know, but there you go. You can see one, you can't reach it, but they're not particularly large. Um, so yeah. And the red runners I prefer um, for a few reasons. I've got the, like I said, I've got the Dubai's for the larger tarantulas, just because of the size they get. But the red runners are just, in my opinion, better 
One, because like I said, like in the name, they are runners, so they move around a lot more, which seems to get the tarantulas more interested in feeding. Um, they breed a lot easier from what I, and quicker, from what I understand. And the uh, like baby or young red runners, I suppose you'd call them, they are absolutely tiny. So things like uh, tiny, tiny slings, tiny little jumper spiders, they can all eat the red runners, whereas the dubious Dubai's, they're quite large, even as youngs. So let's just get the last ones of these in. I'm just going to pour all of that in there, even though it's a bit dirty and there's a bit of bug food in there. There's so many egg casings. And I can see loads of baby cockroaches as well, which you're not going to be able to pick up on the camera. So we'll just pour that whole lot in there. Pour them in. Check in the tub for anything else, which I can't see. So yeah, that is that done I believe. What I'm going to do now, just move all this stuff around at the bottom which I've put in there. Just dig the bug food in a little bit, just to cover it up a bit. Make it look a bit tidier, mainly for me. Um, and then let's move you so you can have a look. Okay, so there we go, that is the Red Runners. Um, as you can see they're all in there chilling out. Well, they're not chilling out, they're running around like loons, but they um, will hopefully be a lot better in here. And also and trying look to at, there you go. find their new home. It won't be as easy for me to pick out the Red Runners when it comes to feeding. But, if they can breed better then I don't mind having a little bit more of a struggle when it comes to picking out the correct size ones. But as you can see, it's not going to be an issue because there's loads of them in there. Um, so, that is it for today. Um, ben, that looks like one of the normal cockroaches. It is one of the other cockroaches. I'm not going to end the video just yet because I'm going to uh, sort of wrap up here for today and then when the springtails and ice pods turn up tomorrow I will film adding those in as well um, so we'll finish the video off tomorrow so hang on a second okay, so that is us for today we will see you tomorrow uh, so three two one time jump and we're back so next day uh, post has been and we have got a box of goodies so this is from um dubai paul i'll put here a link to his uh, website in the description as well really good this is where i got most of my cockroaches from so what we've got in the box is two tubs of these which are basically cockroaches no they're not cockroaches oh. they are um wood lice that i can't remember the they, oh wood they're not lice. wood lice technically they're isopods um, I can't remember the exact species, but we're going to use these as a clean-up crew. And we also have a box of springtails as well. So all we're going to do, really simple just to finish off the video, pull the boxes out, chuck a tub of uh, ice pods in each box, and a half a tub of springtails in each box. So let me just pause you, we'll pull the boxes out, and we'll come in. So, you want to do the wood lice? Yeah. Okay, so that's what's going to do the wood lice. I love wood lice. <laughs> um, but exactly all the cockroaches, we're just going to... Take the cardboard Wait, do they out. eat wood lices? No, the wood lice are there to tidy everything up. So you need to take that out and bang it on the side like we did with the eight cockroaches. <laughs> there we go, see them all going in there. Make sure there's no more on there. How's that? There's one more. Oh, I can't get it off. <laughs> all off there. All the red runners are running. And <laughs> see there's a few in there still as well. Yeah. So we're just going to... Pour those in there. Right, make sure there's none on the damp kitchen roll, which there is, so we'll just pop him off. That's another one. So Why do we put wood lice in here? Because they keep it clean. So oh. the whole reason the wood lice are going in there, I'll explain as Esme's just asked, um, is that to act as a clean up crew. So basically, between the wood lice and the springtails, they'll go around clean up any old food that the cockroaches don't manage to eat and they'll also eat sort of like dead roaches um, any cockroach poo as well so, Ooh, that's disgusting. so yeah they just help to clean it all up so now we're going to add the springtails I'm going to do the springtails just because it needs to be a little bit more precise so if you look really carefully you can see all the tiny little white things moving around oh, yeah. just, I don't know if you'll be able to see them or not they are oh you can sort of see them moving around so they're the springtails if you don't know a lot of people add those to their tarantula enclosures as well and they do 
exactly the same thing. They're just a really good clean up crew. They don't work particularly well in very dry environments. Um, they like it damp. It's not, it's quite well. Oh. Mm. Um, and just chucking those in, they will be absolutely fine. And that again, one's a big one. they'll just go around eating all the rubbish stuff, really. And um, keeping the enclosures a bit fresher and cleaner. So, yeah, there we go. I don't know if you can, let me spin you around so you can see some of the wood lice as well. Isopods, sorry. There we go. So, wood lice. Uh, isopods, they're already in there moving around. I chose the sort of whitey coloured ones just because they sort of stand out a bit more against the soil and obviously against the roaches as well. You can see them in there and they should breed as well so I shouldn't need to add any more to that box. Um, so yeah the roaches as well, I come and check on them last night and they seem to be doing really well which is uh, awesome. So let's pop the lid on and we will get the next box. There we go, so here. Okay, so moving on to the box. Yeah, the other box uh, to buy roaches or dubia roaches. As you can see, not very well. They've already started eating as well, which is good. That's a huge bite on the carrot. It's not just one bite. <laughs> so, you're going to do the wood lice again for me? Yeah. Ice, look, stop calling them wood lice, they're called isopods. There we go. Well, they look like wood lice. They do look like wood lice, that's why I keep saying wood lice. Uh, oh, gosh. There is loads. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? I accidentally dropped it. <laughs> that's alright. Yep, so that's all them done. And again, we'll just check there's nothing left in here. Because there's not nothing in the kitchen towel. I don't think the eyes are very well. Yeah, that's one. Oh. Mm. Just checking. Nothing else. Perfect. So, yeah, that's that all done. So now we're just going to add the rest of the spring towels. And what I'll do is, if the ice pods do start breeding prolifically, I can always use those as feeders as well. So. They're perfect really. So right, so I'm gonna sprinkle those on, make sure we don't get them on the carrot or the peat, the plum. Okay. Just sprinkle them around the edges. So I'm just gonna put the rest of the ice pods in here as uh, not ice pods, the rest of the spring towels in there. That's fine, that's fine of those. And there we go, sorted. That peter. That's gonna sure make cooler than that. Couple left in there. Cool left in there. <laughs> so there we go, let's move you around. There you go, that's the Dubias with the spring towels and isopods. I don't know if you can see the spring towels or not. Not really. A few isopods yeah. in there with the roaches. So as you can see, they really stand out compared to the roaches what, as well. But what if the roaches eat them? And the roaches won't eat them because the roaches aren't carn carnivorous. They only eat sort of vegetables and plants and stuff. Mm. So yeah, there we go. Right, let me spin you back round. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the video. Esme's just going to chuck the lid back on the box and pop the roaches away. Um, so that's how I keep the roaches. I'll keep you updated sort of as they're doing if I notice anything. Um, but already they seem to be a lot better than they were in the plastic tub just with the egg crate. Um, obviously if you've got any questions give us a shout as well. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, so yeah, that is the end of the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time. Thanks everybody. Bye bye. Bye.